Now think of this. Silica is the most abundant mineral on earth, with human society always taking advantage of what it has available, it is then expected that it is then integrated to many uses. These include additives in construction, glass manufacturing, and many more. In 2018, glass waste generated was 12.3 million tons in the U.S. alone, with hardly 60% being thrown in landfills. Good afternoon, ceramic enthusiasts. Today's topic is about the utilization of waste glass to enhance physical and mechanical properties of fired clay bricks. We have a seat, Alice and another adventure in the world of ceramics. With Robin Dispo and Christian Saladaga in Ceramic, ceramic Talks. Talks, bringing you your dose of ceramic education. In 2015, a research was conducted by Nona Fong Fen Puak and his team in where they identified the effects of waste glass addition on the physical, mechanical, and thermal properties of fired clay brick by comparing fired clay bricks with varying amounts of waste glass in the composition. Comparison will be tested on firing string gauge, density, water absorption, and apparent porosity compressive strength, and microstructure analysis of fired clay bricks vitrification. Fire bricks are construction materials used since ancient times and still prove their use until today. These materials have been designed to be more homogeneous, porous, harder, and stronger due to studying of ceramic bonds. The sintering process in ceramics makes use of the silica atoms to form bonds between particles and is called the fluxing agent. These additives are usually encountered to enable lower temperature and form glassy phase bond. This is where waste glass can be utilized to help serve the additive function. This research aims to show data of how waste glass is utilized to prove the effect of waste glass on compressive strength, apparent porosity, water absorption, firing shrinkage, density of the fired clay bricks. Now with that being said, let's jump into the paper. A preparation of the test specimens. Chemical analysis of raw materials began by using X-ray fluorescence on the raw materials. This identified the composition of both clay and waste glass. The data is shown on the table present on the screen. Next, the waste glass was first crushed for 1 hour using a ball mill. The particle size distribution test was carried out for waste glass using sieve analysis. And finally, the mineralogical composition of clay and waste glass were achieved using an X-ray diffraction technique. In order to compare the clay brick and bricks made of clay and glass, each batch of specimens were mixed in a porcelain bowl mill to ensure homogeneous mixing. Then, 20-25% to of water was added and mixed to obtain the plastic condition of mixture. Soft mud rectangular clay bricks with dimensions of 140mm, 65mm, and 40mm were formed using brick hand molding. The clay brick specimens were air dried at room temperature which is 25 to 30 degrees celsius for 24 hours and then over dried at 110 plus minus 
5 degrees Celsius for another 24 hours to remove water content. The green specimens were fried at 3 temperatures, 900 degrees Celsius, 150 degrees Celsius and 1000 degrees Celsius. The time taken to reach the required temperature was 8 hours and the specimens were kept at this temperature for 1 hour. First characterization technique that we encounter is the firing shrinkage. In shrinkage of ceramic body, it is most likely related to the loss of water in decomposition. This is according to Guggenheim S. and Gross K. 2001. The figures shown on the screen are the data from the research that proves so. The table of data of the results, it showed that bricks without glass have firing shrinkage of 3.41 to 4.34 percent. The specimens with 5 and 10 percent waste class had shrinkages of 4.34 and 4.83 percent, respectively. Firing shrinkage needs an understanding of the sintering process, and this process forms the pore structure and solid phases in the finished product, which influence the strength, durability, and adsorption properties. In a similar research, it was stated that the 5% additive waste class had no statistical improvement on clay bricks firing shrinkage, while 10% waste class had only a slight increase if the particles were coarse, but had a significant difference if it had finer particle sizes. The table shown on screen are data from the research conducted by Chitiak SE and Federico LM 2007. density. The table shown that the density is a simple trend in which with the addition of glass waste additives result in an increase in density. Density of clay brick depends on specific gravity of the raw material, method manufacturing and degree of burning stated by Karaman and colleagues in 2008. In 2016, a research by Somia Zolfagernia and colleagues stated that glass waste with no sulfonic acid becomes stable in mass at temperature 220 degrees Celsius. In clay, mass loss is closely related to its loss of organic matter and water. In understanding the sintering process, the liquid phase sintering with waste glass contributed to the decrease in pore volume. It is because waste glass supporting the densification of the bricks liquefies and fills the gaps and aids in absorption within particles. Our next characteristic is on water absorption and apparent porosity. The results showed that there is an apparent trend to the addition of waste glass to the water absorption and apparent porosity. The internal structure of brick must be sufficiently dense to avoid the intrusion of water. The water absorptions of clay bricks fired at temperatures between 900 and 1000 degrees Celsius were in the range of 14.7 to 18.66%. The highest porosity was 35.17% with no waste glass addition fired at 900 degrees Celsius and the lowest was 29.71% with 10% of waste glass addition fired at 1000 degrees Celsius. This result revealed that the lowest porosity in fired clay brick occurred when the highest percentage of waste glass was added. Thus, the pores of fired clay bricks were affected due to the increased formation of glassy paste during the firing process. According to S.E. Chidiak and L.M. Federico 2007, pore volume decreases with the amount of additive glass in the bricks. The figure shown on screen is the said data for their research. Impressive strength. The table shown the data results from the compressive strength by the bricks presented that there is a relative higher difference in clay bricks with waste glass compared to the one that contains none. The results revealed that the compressive strengths were in the ranges of 19.30 to 24.65 megapascal 
when waist glass addition increased from 5 to 10 percent and firing temperatures from 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius. To improve the properties of a material, it is often necessary to increase its densification through phase stabilization, active sintering, reactive sintering, and through liquid phase sintering. Phase stabilization is the use of another phase to prevent grain growth. Active sintering is the use of an additive to increase bulk transport, and reactive sintering is the use of additives to prevent loss of stoichiometry. Moreover, the liquid phase entering waste glass considerably contributed to vitrification and enhanced the strength development by closing the internal pores with glassy phase, especially during firing. In a related research, according to Demir in 2009, the results indicate that the strength was extremely dependent on the amount of waste glass in the mixtures as well as on the applied firing temperatures. Compressive strength increased with increasing waste glass content. This behavior was also been reported by other researchers such as Lechenga and Pernev in 2002, Bernardo and colleagues in 2006, and Raimundo and colleagues in 2007. The compressive strength of fried clay bricks was lowest in the controlled samples, which is 0%, at the given temperatures. This was due to the increased porosity of the control samples in comparison with the samples that include waste glass. Finally, our last characterization is on microstructure analysis. The images shown on screen are the specimens fired at 900, 950, and 1000 degrees Celsius with 0, 5, and 10% waste glass and were developed by a scanning electron microscope. As part of the clay was replaced with waste glass content, the risk of strength reduction due to quartz transformation is reduced. Moreover, the waste glass addition is glassy in nature and shows glassy phase transformation in the body. Therefore, the addition of waste glass makes a positive contribution to the strength of the fired clay body. The liquid phase of glass fills the voids in the specimens and increases the adsorption of the particles, resulting in a more compact polycrystalline form. The image shown is how it is described. Now let's put both pictures side by side and see the similarities and comparisons. The physical and mechanical properties of the fire clay brick with waste glass addition were studied. The results shown that the compressive strength of the bricks increased with increasing waste glass content from 0 to 10% and firing temperatures from 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius. The values of both apparent porosity and water absorption have decreased with the increase of glass waste content and firing temperature. The optimum glass waste content of 10% enabled bricks to be fired at a lower temperature of 900 degrees Celsius. This resulted in bricks with similar strength and increase in porosity compared to those normal bricks fired at 1000 degrees Celsius. The study also revealed that the glass phase fused bond with the clay brick bodies, as well as the fusion of crystalline quartz and clay resulting in the acceleration of densification process with some positive effects viz increased strength, and lowered open porosity and water absorption. The waste glass could thus be used as a potential fluxing agent to help lower firing temperature or improve the thermal and mechanical properties of fired clay bricks. Who knew that glass had such a use even at its waste stage in its lifetime? Think of all the advantages we could do with that integration in construction. With ceramic studying its crystal structure and composition, the thoughts are endless. I agree, but I guess that's all our time. Join us next time for another dose of ceramic education. Goodbye, and keep your minds molded with knowledge. Ceramic, ceramic Talks, talks.